Hey, this is Mikey with Cinemaspice.net, and I'm going to do a quick tutorial in Premiere Pro about doing some animations and using some sound effects. Now, I usually don't do Premiere tutorials, and I might start doing more, or this might be the only one, but get the effects and the transitions that you use most often and, and put them into their own folder. So you can see I've got two folders here, one called Effects, one called Transitions. And these ones I use you know, quite often like Crop and Drop Shadow, um, EQ, Fast Blur, Curves, Sharpen. You know, Those are just kind of some basic ones that you're going to be using a lot. And then Transition, there's going to be one that you want to get. It's called Film Impact, and it's free. And there are some really great transitions. And I'm going to be using one into the today's tutorial. So there's a link included where you can go and download that. So let's talk a little about animating in Premiere. Most of the time you're going to want to animate in After Effects, but there's some times when, you know, say you don't have the time to bring everything over and you just want something really quick. So let's bring in some footage and say I wanted to bring in and animate some text on top of this. So first let's kind of organize things up here. So in, in my program, my project manager window, I'm going to create some bins. So let's call this one footage. Let's do one for sound effects. I'm just organizing these into the bins. And this is sequences. And then one more titles. And I don't have any titles yet, but I will. So in order to create text or create any sort of shapes in Premiere, you need to do it in a title layer. I guess you could do like a big solid shape, but this is, I found the easiest way. So I'm going to make sure I've got my titles bin selected. I'm going to come down to a new item. Go down to title. Let's give it a name because I'm just going to use this as a text layer. And then it brings up this whole title window. And in this title window, I can create shapes. You know, do a circle, squares, um, and I've got text as well. So I'm going to type in here clouds. Let's give it a different color so it shows up easier. Change the font. All right. Now I can align this. There's some basic aligning tools. So I can align this right into the center if I want. And what that did is it put it here in the titles folder because I had that highlighted as I created it and it put it in here. So let's bring this down into my timeline. And that's pretty cool, but I want this to animate in. And so there are some, some animation features you have in Premiere. It's not going to be as powerful as After Effects, but you can still do some pretty cool stuff. So I'm going to select my clouds layer, and go into the motion, and you have position, scale, rotation, anchor point. And then I can keyframe these. See, there's a stopwatch, and if you're used to After Effects, then you'll notice that stopwatch there. And so I want to keyframe this to slide in. So the easiest way to do that, since I already have it where I want it, I'm going to go to the point on my timeline at one second in which I want the title to be there, keyframe the position, move back in time, and then let's move it out. And then you can see that that animates in. Now that's kind of fun and dandy, but it doesn't really look that great. So the way I like to animate titles in, in Premiere let's take off the keyframe data, is I'm using a transition called Impact Push. And I talked about it at the beginning. And let's put that right on there. And if I click on it, there's some options here. You've got direction, so if it's coming, if it's going left, if it's going right, and I want it to go right. And then there's the blur amount. And so this is going to add some motion blur to it. Let's go to 15. And then I bring my transition down, and it's basically doing the same thing, but it's going to look nicer. It's a lot smoother, and there's some motion blur to it. And it's really easy to go in and adjust the speed. So I use this trick a lot um, when I'm doing some basic animations in Premiere. Okay, now let's go in and maybe change the position up. See, and I can do all this. I can change the position, and it's not going to affect my animation because I don't have any keyframe data on there because I did it with a transition. So clouds. Now let's add some little bullet points to this. So let's add another title. Clouds, big, white, fluffy. And let's 
make this match. And let's center that as well. Now, if I bring this in on as a separate layer, I have the option to come in and also move this around, say it's not exactly where I want, or I can keep it the same. I can double click on it, it brings me into this window again and bring that down, say I wanted it down a little bit. Now, what I want to do is I want these to pop on the best they can. And it, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop it and then just keyframe the crop. So clouds comes in and then at this point right here, I'm just kind of timing it by, so right at a minute five or one second five, I want to do a crop. And so I'm going to go into my effects. Remember I ha how I had one already. So bring the crop right onto that. If I highlight it, then I can see, if I select crop, then I can see a bounding box. And I can come in and crop it. So I'm going to crop it just to the big. And that's the bottom, so I'm going to keyframe that. I'm going to go forward, hit a keyframe, then move forward just one frame. Bring the crop down. Go forward a little bit. Add another keyframe. I can't hit the stopwatch because it'll turn it off. I have to hit that keyframe there. Go forward just one frame. And then there we have it. So we got the clouds. And then that's how they animate it. So pretty simple to do it that way. I can also come in and there's some things that are, are fun here. I can add in like a shadow to make it a little bit easier to see. Let's come in here. Let me change the size. And then I want to do that to the clouds as well. So there's some basic animations. I can I can I can do even a little bit more. So let's come in and um, maybe move this a little bit, and I, maybe I want this clouds the background to animate as well. So let's go into the motion. So I just selected it. Let's go into the motion tab. I'm going to animate the scale. And let's bring that down to zero. And after you do an animation, if I click on it, you can see right there there's some keyframes. And if I just hit the zoom controls while I have this selected, it's going to zoom in. Or I can take this bar in the timeline and move it that way. And so if I move the keyframes closer together, it's going to be faster. OK, that's looking pretty good. And now I want all of this to now animate off. And I'm going to use, again, this push impact push transition but I'm going to use an adjustment layer. So I'm going to go down to new item, grab an adjustment layer, and let's bring this down into the timeline, and let's grab my impact push. And I actually want this to be at the end. And what it's going to do is it's going to now take everything and animate it off. And then at this point where it's it's off, let's go in and chop these. Okay, let's take a look at this. So animates on and off. Now I I think I want the these words to pop on a little bit faster. So let's come into the points. And then what I need to do is just move these keyframes. So let's highlight them and move them together and the closer they are the faster the timing is going to be okay so I've got that now let's add some sound effects to this and so I've got some sound effects over here let's take a listen to them there's a bop a swish and a couple of rubber hits. So I like that last one. 
I'm just going to bring this down here. And let's zoom into my timeline. And if I hold my mouse over right here in the audio tracks where it says A1 and I scroll, it's going to make that bigger so I can see the sound effect. So that looks pretty cool. Maybe let's increase the volume on that. And then I can also come into the audio track mixer and I can I can mix the volume on these uh, tracks themselves. Okay, that's the first one. And the next one is I want to use a swish when this clouds come in. Now the trick when you're using a swish, so let's bring this down in here, is you can see that there's a definite peak. And you want that peak to be right in right the middle of the transition. And then it's going to be feel a little bit more natural. And now the next part is these big, white, fluffy. And so I want to use the bop for this, but I don't want it to sound the same every time. And that's probably a little bit loud, so I'm going to bring that down. At this point, I'm going to copy it. I'm just holding down Option and then I'm dragging to a new layer. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this. Go down to speed duration. And I'm going to speed this up. Let's go to 115. And it's going to sound different. And then this last one, fluffy. Change the speed to 130. So I just went up by 15 both times. And then that adds some variation to your sound effects. Even though I only have the one sound, I made it sound like three different sounds just by speeding it up and it changes the, the pitch. And then lastly, let's go to the end and let's check out. I like that one. And again, you can see the definite peak. You want that to be in the middle of the transition. Let's see how that sounds. Okay, so that's adding some sound effects and doing some basic animations.